Hello YouTube, this is Dazza the Cameraman. Today is Friday, March the 4th, 2016, and today we're looking at this video by Truth Not Trolls Sturrock called Mr. Dazza's Blunder Flat Earth Remains. And in this video, uh, Truth Not Trolls has done a debunk of my angular size video. Uh, and he goes through a number of points, so I encourage you to go out and check out Mr. Truth Not Trolls video. And under the video, hopefully if my comments have not been sent to the spam folder, you should see this uh, response from me where I've gone through point by point with the time. If you click on these blue links, it'll take you to the time in the video that we're talking about. So let's try and do a quick critique of this video. Um, I'll just bring the volume down. Hopefully it won't be too loud. The debunker who claims Ted is using a camera to estimate its angular size has proven the flat earth is false. Okay, so I won't play the whole video because obviously it'll take too long, but you can watch it for yourself. And the first thing that I notice in this video, and I've asked Truth Not Trolls about this, is that the imagery that he uses to show the rising sun is awfully fuzzy. You'll see that I've got this video set to HD. To be fair, I'm, I'm screen recording this, but, but my view is um, as good as it will get on the monitor. Data that would prove... But what we see in this video is, is that the, the image is actually very fuzzy. Now, I'm not sure if this is actual video of a sunrise or if this is a computer simulation of a sunrise. And it's important that we know that. But in any case, what we're seeing here is that the sun appears to get bigger as it gets higher in the sky. Okay, So if I bring that back down to where the sun was rising, let's just find that again. you'll see that the sun is actually very small when it comes up over the horizon. And then it gets larger as it gets higher in the sky. Here we go. So I've just paused that there so we can see that the sun is very low as it's just come up over the horizon. And then as it gets higher in the sky, it gets bigger. Well, there is a very simple reason for this, and I've already explained it in my previous videos. When we look at the sun, what we see is mostly glare. We're seeing bright sunlight scattered through the atmosphere as the light is refracted through our atmosphere. If we didn't have an atmosphere, we would just see the disk of the sun. Now, I can demonstrate this for you by showing you the following images on my Facebook page. I'll post a link to these images in the description area that you can view even if you're not on Facebook. So here is an image that I took back on Friday 29th of March 2013 at 5.20pm New Zealand time or 4.20 UTC and we can see that the sun looks really big in the sky but as I said most of what we are seeing here is actually glare but when we use a suitable solar filter to remove all of that glare this is what we see. So that green dot there is the disk of the Sun. That's how small it is. It is half of one degree across. It is tiny. You can block it out with your little finger. If you don't have a suitable solar filter to use, you can actually try this. Just hold your little finger out at arm's length and see if you can block out the disk of the Sun with the tip of your little finger. And you'll see that once you've blocked out all the glare, the actual disk of the Sun is actually quite small. So let's flick backwards and forwards just so you can see the comparison there. No trickery here. The green dot is the actual disk of the sun. And here is a side-by-side -side comparison for you. So most of what we see is actually glare from the sun. So if you're going to check the angular size of the sun, it is essential that you use a suitable solar filter and remove the glare because it is not the sun that we're seeing, it is the glare that you're seeing. So let's go back to the video. So again, as I was just saying, the reason uh, that the sun looks so big is because of the sunlight being scattered through the atmosphere. The reason it looks so small when it's down lower 
is because we're actually looking through more atmosphere and the thickness of that atmosphere is actually filtering out the disk of the Sun as if we were looking through a solar filter. In fact, uh, at times when there is fog or smog or um, bushfires or whatever, sometimes you can actually easily see the disk of the Sun um, through haze because the glare is filtered. Okay, So this is why it appears to get bigger as it gets higher in the sky because we're seeing more glare of the Sun. But you cannot do a comparison of the sun size like this if you're not using a solar filter and you're not zoomed up so that you can see the disk of the sun. So let's scroll down to the next point. Why is the image so fuzzy? I've already asked that. Um, at 3.40 you show my image of the sun at 7.44am and you say you will notice that the sun is very high above the horizon. At that time the sun was at 11 degrees above the horizon. I don't consider 11 degrees to be very high above the horizon. Uh, do you accept that it was at 11 degrees though? Uh, it, may, it may be that he's just making the point that he considers 11 degrees to be very high. I wasn't sure if he was actually saying that it was higher than 11 degrees. At uh, 5 minutes into the video you ask why the angular size of the sun is not shown at the same scale. Let's have a look at that. At five minutes. Okay, so here we are looking at the interactive chart that I used to show the changing angular size of the sun in my video. Now, Truth Not Trolls asks a very good question. Why would you do that? Why not show everything to scale? Because in my video I pointed out that the angular size of the Sun shown in this interactive chart was not at the same scale as everything else here such as the height of the Sun at 3000 miles the diameter of the Sun is given at 32 miles okay now there's a very simple reason for this um, and that is because if we showed this the angular size of the Sun which remember angular size is the apparent size it is not the physical size it is the if you measured from your eye um, to the sides of an object obviously as it's coming towards you the object appears to get bigger the physical size remains the same but its angular size gets larger as it gets closer to you okay but if we showed the the angular size at the same scale as this chart it would be impossible to see now i'll show you why here is the same chart that I used, and I've got the, the viewing observation angle at 11.5 degrees angle altitude. Okay, so that was the angle that the sun was at at 7.44 a.m. in my video. It was at 11.5 degrees. This is the, this represents the sun, the angular size of the sun. And if we look down here, we've got um, the beta angle there is 11.5. So that is the angle here, our observation angle, and the, the alpha angle here that, that we're showing is the angular size, okay? And that is displayed at 0 0.12 of a degree. Well, if you look at a protractor and look at how small one degree is, then I think you'll quickly see that on a chart of this scale, half of one degree is actually going to be very tiny. Now, if we bring this up to 66 degrees, which was at 1.30 p.m. the afternoon when the sun was at its highest point in the sky, so I've got that now set to 66.55 degrees, we see that the angular um, diameter here is 0 0.56 degrees. So 0 0.5 degrees is half of one degree. Okay, and I think I jumped ahead before when I said half a degree when I was talking about 11.5. It was actually, let's have another look at that. At 11.5 degrees viewing angle. The angular diameter was 0 0.12. So we're talking about just over a tenth of one degree. Okay. And when the sun is at 66 degrees viewing altitude, it is approximately half of one degree. 
This is on the flat Earth model, remember, it's not the globe Earth. And so this cannot be shown at the same scale as the rest of the chart because it would simply be too small to view. This would be a tiny little dot. And you wouldn't be able to see any appreciable change in the, um, the angular diameter because the scale would be too small. So this has been magnified so that you can see the change in um, angular diameter. Now, there's no trickery in the change of the angular diameter there. The angular diameter is actually shown to scale. Okay, So we've got um, 0 0.12 angular diameter there, and we've got um, 0 0.5 approximately 0 0.5 angular diameter there, which is half of one degree. So when we compare the two angular diameters up the top, that part is to scale, but it cannot be to scale with the rest of the chart. It's a bit like trying to view the solar system. You can either view the orbits to scale on a chart, and then you've got Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars are all sort of bunched up together in the middle, and then you've got the outer planets all shown further out but you can you can fit the orbit diagram all onto one page but you can't do that at the same scale showing the planets the sorry the, the planet sizes if you show the planet sizes at the same scale then you can't show the orbit sizes at the same scale it's got to be one or the other you can't show both and it's exactly the same thing with this So, this video is getting quite long, but anyway, um, I've pointed out here at 11.5 degrees uh, angle altitude, a 32 mile wide, 3000 mile high sun will be 0 0.12 of a degree, angular size at 66.5 degrees, it will be 0 0.56 of a degree in angular size. Try showing a half degree size sun on the same chart at that, uh, at that same scale. Okay. In your video at 6.28, again I need to ask you if this is a real video or a computer simulation because it is awfully fuzzy and does not look real. Even if it is real, why was the camera not zoomed in and, at a, suitable, and a suitable solar filter used so that only the disk of the sun could be seen instead of all the glare which is caused by the bright sunlight scattering through the atmosphere. At 7.55 in your video, Okay, um, let's have a look at that comment there. I can just hit that. At 7.55, um, you... Let's, let's have a listen. ...degrees at 7.44 a.m. You would measure it from the horizon to that point because that is where it changes. That is where it, it all joins together. Okay, so at this point in the video, I don't want to play the whole thing because this is already going to be way too long for most people to watch. Um, you're saying that I didn't film the, the sun from the horizon, and that's a fair criticism. The, the, it's not that I planned it that way. I wandered out to put out the rubbish on that morning, and I looked up in the sky, and it was a nice clear blue sky, and the sun was there, and I had a perfect opportunity because I had the time and the sky was clear, so I grabbed my camera and I started filming. And I thought, well, I'll film later on when the sun is higher in the sky. But you make a, a valid criticism that we didn't uh, view the sun as it was rising from the horizon. So at some stage, when I've got the, the time and the energy and the weather is cooperating, I will endeavour to go out and probably film a sunset because that will be easier for me than filming a sunrise. I don't have a clear view to the eastern horizon from here, so I would have to travel some distance to get a clear view, but it is easier for me to get a view to the western horizon. There is a mountain range to my, to my west, but it is so low that I don't think that it would be considered to be a problem. Um, I can give the angle of the sun where it sets, um, but I'm happy to do that, and if I do that, I will be happy to film the, the uh, sunset or the sunrise, if I film a sunrise, with not one, but two matching cameras side by side. I will film 
the sun from 15 degrees altitude to the horizon, or vice versa, and that will take approximately one hour to film. And I will film with one camera zoomed right in, and I will film with the other camera zoomed out, so that we've got a side-by-side -side comparison. Um, I'm thinking of using a solar filter on both of them, but I might even look at using a third camera, and I don't have a third matching camera, but I might use a third camera um, without a solar filter, so that we can see the glare of the sun at the same time. Or I might just drop the filter in and out of the one of the two cameras, which is probably the easiest way, and then I've got matching cameras. I want to be as scientific as possible, don't we? At 8.30 in your video, you insist that the sun does, in fact, get bigger. Okay, well, that is not what my observations show, and it is not what any other astronomer on this planet viewing the sun has ever seen. The angular size of the sun's disk remains at approximately half of one degree, regardless of the sun's altitude. Google angular size of the sun. You will find that it is between 31 arc minutes, 31 arc seconds, to 32 arc minutes, 33 arc seconds in angular diameter, which is approximately half of one degree. The difference between 31 arc minutes and 32 arc minutes is almost nothing. Just for your information, there are 60 arc minutes to a degree. So 30 arc minutes is half of one degree. Please do your own experiment to measure the angular size of the sun with and without the glare. At 8.40, the chart that you show does not account for the glare of the sun, but my observations do. I used a solar filter to exclude the glare of the sun. The image you use includes the glare of the sun. In my next comment below, I will post a link to my images showing the sun with and without the glare. Now, we've already seen those images earlier in this video. At 10.50, the video that you close out with does not use a solar filter, as I did, and it does not use a consistent zoom, as I did. So, yet again, we see nothing more than glare, except when he zooms right in and we see the disk but then we have no before and after image uh, at exactly the same level of zoom to compare it to, which we did have in my video. Let's have a look at that closing video. So here is the video that we're closing with, and as we can see there is no solar filter being used. So we zoom in, we can't see where the disk is until he zooms right in. And then the camera focuses. Okay, all we're seeing is a lot of glare at the moment, and can't tell where the disc is. And I'm still not sure if we're actually seeing the disc or just glare at this stage because there is no solar filter being used. But we'll give them a chance. I think we do see the disc here at some stage. But you know, if you're not going to use a solar filter, then you can't see the, the disk. Um, let's try and get to the cut to the chase scene, as they say. No, to me this, this video... Oh, here we go, here we go. Because there is now some cloud, this is why we're seeing the disk of the sun. So the cloud is actually acting as a solar filter. There we go. There is the disk of the sun. But the problem with this is that we've got no comparison at the same zoom. If you're going to zoom in and out, what what level of zoom are we talking about? Halfway in? Three quarters way in? Two thirds? Because obviously that is going to affect the apparent size of the sun as you zoom in and zoom out. When I did my video, I zoomed the the zoom all the way in, as far as it would go on all three occasions so that they would be consistent and that's not what we're seeing in this video so this video in fact look if I just hit this now and jump ahead you're going to see the change in the angular size just in this few seconds look here we go right because he zoomed in further so which one is it is it this one is it that one or is it that one which one is it 
because we're not using a consistent zoom. You see the problem here? Now, this video has gone way over time, and um, I hope that um, that you will have watched it through to the end. Uh, truth, not trolls. I've already said in a comment below your video that I would be more than happy to talk to you one to one via Skype, so that we can uh, talk about this and and try and uh, understand each other's point of view on this and see if we can figure it out together. You don't have to front up to a camera if you don't want to. That's not necessary. Uh, you will need to talk on the on the on Skype because obviously we need to communicate. But you're obviously happy to use a microphone in your videos anyway, so you shouldn't have a problem with that. By using Skype, uh, we can share screens so that we're both looking at the same thing on our computer screens at the same time, and then we can discuss it. I undertake to be respectful and polite and not talk over you or be rude. And also, I give my permission for you to record our Skype conversation. Um, and I undertake to not publish any recording of our Skype conversation without your prior consent. I do reserve the right to make a recording because I have been taken out of context in the past. So I would reserve the right to keep a recording so that I've got proof of what was said and what wasn't said. But if you're willing to accept my offer, I'd be more than happy to talk to you via Skype. Thank you for watching.